Welcome to Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. Each week, we check in with our capital correspondent, Sean Kitchen, on the good, bad, and the ugly that is Harrisburg, PA. We're now on iTunes and Stitcher, so subscribe to the podcast. Give us some feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you could always check it out on our website, RagingChickenPress.org, um, but uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Raging Chicken Radio is a project of Raging Chicken Press, so check us out. Um, all the citizen journalism right on our website, RagingChickenPress.org. And if you like what you see, you like what you hear here, go to our website and click on the support and membership tab and become a member for as little as $5 a month. And also, if you're interested in contributing to Raging Chicken Press, just drop us an email at ragingchickenpress at gmail.com or send us a direct message on Twitter. We're at RC Press on Twitter. Um, send us a direct message there. So we began Raging Chicken Press almost five years ago to provide a platform for homegrown, progressive citizen journalism and media activism. So if you've got something to say or if you just want to learn how to do this work, drop us an email at ragingchickenpress at gmail.com and hey, let's get started. So we've had a, a, a prizzy, pretty busy week uh, at Raging Chicken Press. Uh, we welcome two new contributors, uh, Ann Meter from the DC Media Group and Joy Marie Manbeck. Uh, Joy Marie Manbeck is a Bernie Sanders activist and she's on his campaign uh, right here in Pennsylvania. Uh, check out Ann's article on the anti-pipeline activists up in Huntington County, PA, and get a behind the scenes look at organizing events for Bernie Sanders uh, from Joy. Both articles are up now on Raging Chicken Press. Also, I have a couple articles up on the Republican legislators' attacks on Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. The faculty union, ABSCUF, is moving closer to authorizing a strike if there's no progress in their negotiations. Stay tuned here for all the details. Uh, we'll be updating that from probably weekly at this point. Um, they've been working without a contract since July 2015. Now, of course, our regular readers uh, know that my podcast partner here, Sean Kitchens, spent a good deal of a time uh, this past week, past couple weeks, really, focused on new anti-abortion legislation being proposed, um, it's HB 1948, and this would institute some of the most restrictive bans on abortion in the country. Now, Sean reported on connections between this legislation and some right-wing dark money groups. It was even hearings that some Catholic organizations may have been trying to do some backroom horse trading on this deal. So I'll tell you, it was quite a week. So, Sean, welcome, Sean. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Uh, good. So wh why don't you bring us up to date, bring us up to speed on where things are with this legislation now, with HB 1948? Well, I'm um, getting indication that it's dead. Dead it's as dead. a doornail. Dead bring as a doornail. Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! It's done. Uh, yes, I'm getting those indications. Uh, yesterday, um... Governor Wolf had Planned Parenthood inside the Capitol newsroom. Uh, Cecile Richards was there. Wow, they brought and, Cecile Richards up. Yes, yeah, Cecile Richards came in, so that's how serious you knew that they were taking in Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And um, they were able to get mothers who had abortions after the 20th week of their pregnancies to talk about why they had to go through that process. You know, that either the babies were going to be born with severe pain, with severe birth defects. You know, these mothers had already had the names picked out. And it was frankly, like one of the toughest decisions they had to make in their lives. Right. And that th this would go to show that this bill came to law. These mothers would have been forced to bring these fetuses to birth and th the baby and go through that suffering of having to bring this child to life for maybe a year or two until it passed away. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, that must that must have been an incredibly powerful moment. And I can totally see why uh, these right wing nut jobs would want to pull this legislation after that. I mean, it's pretty hard to go up against uh, kind of real stories of mothers struggling with this uh, with this decision, as opposed to just dealing with some kind of abstract, you know, ideological argument. And you know what? This is what happens when you uh, close off everyone from public discourse. You introduce a bill on a Friday, mm -hmm. run it through committee on a Monday and try to vote on it the following week. The Democrats were able to balk the bill. You know, it was supposed to come up for a vote last Wednesday. It didn't. It was supposed to come up for a vote yesterday. It didn't. And before it was going to, even the House was in session, they had this press conference. And one of the more important things to watch out for is that the bill did not go through the House Appropriations Committee. Mm -hmm. So when I, the bill goes through the House Appropriations Committee on the third day of consideration, that pretty much gives it a fiscal note, gives it the House Appropriations Committee approval to run it, and then the House will vote for it for final passage. So it did not go through the committee. It did not go to final passage. It looks like it will not be voted on today or tomorrow. And it looks like it's dead because the primaries are coming up in two weeks. The legislature will be off until the first week of May. And they want to come back to here and start passing another horrible Tom Corbett-esque budget for the sixth year in a row. 
So let, let me just get your read on this then. So uh, there were those, I mean, this is something that you reported on um, over the past couple of weeks. There were those um, who thought that this bill was simply kind of red meat for the base. That was, there was no big, you know, there was no plan to really move this forward and so on. Uh, now you were making the case that no, that's not really the case. I mean, you were hearing something quite different. And it seems to me that for Cecile Richards to come here, I mean, not just to have a Planned Parenthood event, but, you know, you're having the kind of, you know, president of Planned Parenthood Action Fund, right? President, right? She and Cecile Richards is no joke and she's a busy woman. And we had the listener um, speak a couple years ago in front of a crowd at the Progressive Summit and she brought that place to their feet. That's right. And actually, and if we got anybody, to listen to I, nations four years ago, too. That's absolutely right. And if anybody's interested in checking out what Cecile Richards had to say in Pennsylvania last year, um, that actually interview is up on Raging Chicken Press. You just go to our website and you can search Cecile Richards. And we have the full audio of her address at um, Keystone Progress uh, Summit um, last year in Pennsylvania. But it, absolutely. So it seemed to me that at very least uh, Cecile Richards and Planned Parenthood um, were not buying that this was simply uh, red meat to the base, but that there right. was just cause to come out here and stop this thing. Exactly. You had to kill it in its tracks. You had to treat this bill as if it was going to pass and as if it was going to to restrict women's rights to an abortion, to the repro pre reproductive health care rights. And I have that same approach when, with writing about this. You know, you talk to journalists, you talk to other politicians, they kind of blew it off to the side saying, yeah, well, oh, well, it's just a, it's just a fundraising point. Mm -hmm. Or that this was a way because for Kathy Rapp to get the bona fides of her constituents because she's has she's getting flanked from the right. Imagine that the lady who introduced the ultrasound bill, who introduced the twenty work twenty week ab abortion bill. What else does she have to do to get reelected by her constituents or to ward off even more conservative primary that's, challenges in that district? That's pretty incredible. What what district is she in again? I have no clue. It's out in Warren County. Out in Warren County. Somewhere so in Pennsylvania. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say somewhere in Pennsylvania. <laughs> somewhere in Pennsylvania. <laughs> you kill me. Um, but, but no, but like, she's getting flanked from her right. Exactly. That's pretty incredible. And um, one of the things that that is also really incredible about this is how it didn't even come up for a four vote in the House, mm -hmm. and that they were shamed by Planned Parenthood into pulling this bill. Well, you were, I mean, because you were fully expecting this to come to the um, come to a vote yesterday, isn't that right? Yes, I was fully expecting this to come to a vote last week. Come to a vote either in the Senate was going was actually there are people in the Senate dying to take it up. Um, there are a lot of moderate Republicans who didn't want this bill to come up in the Senate, but there are also a lot of conservative Republicans who wanted the bill to come up in the Senate. And frankly, if you looked at the math uh, prior. At prior abortion bills, you should you should have been worried about this because most of these passed with super majority, super majority uh, votes over the past three years. That, that's you, right. You know, overwhelming support, seventy percent of the legislature supported for these bills that would you know f ban women from getting abortion access through the federal health care exchange programs, mm -hmm. through Obamacare, through private insurers that got passed. Also, uh, the bills. The uh, admitting privileges bills that got passed. Both of these major pieces of legislation got passed with overwhelming support of the legislature, veto-proof well, majorities. Well, you know, you and I were we were just talked about this on Sunday. Is that one of the things that that uh, still kind of baffles me? Is that you know when a piece of legislation like this um, kind of gets gets offered, it seems to me that you know there needs to be anybody who calls themselves progressive, at least um, you know that's in the legislature, any kind of Democrat or you know, someone who's, I don't know, not a Democrat, or at least, you know, was doing lobbying, whatever like this on a progressive cause or something. The first question seems to me is that, you know, where is this coming from and what's the bill's history? Because I know recently, I think it was Kansas, but I'm not 100% sure on that, um, had almost like, a, well, very similar, not exactly identical, but a very, very similar piece of legislation that was recently defeated. Um, and it seems like, you know, this is the kind of pushes that we're going to see. So I, I, I'm just... You know, you don't have to go here with me, but, uh, you know, I'm just curious, is that why do you think there was not immediate, strong, kind of like outspoken voices um, among the Democratic leadership um, to try to to try to put this thing down? I mean, because you, you said that Cecile Richard came in at Tom Wolf's invitation. Is that correct? Exactly. 
So why did we see that kind of push coming out of the uh, Democratic leadership in the House or Senate? Well, first off, um, you have the minority whip, Mike, ha Mike Hanna, mm -hmm. voting to close the bill off the debate last week. He voted against delaying the bill until a later time. Mm -hmm. So you have people in Democratic leadership from rural Pennsylvania who support, who are pro-life who are pro -life and they support these type of bills. Mm -hmm. And the, I th frankly, I think the caucus is unorganized. It's a big tent party. You know, you have your progressive liberals from, or your more liberal types, not progressives, from the Philadelphia or from your urban areas. Mm -hmm. But then you have your Democrats from, you know, rural Pennsylvania, where it's God's guns and labor. Interesting. And you don't, well, yeah. you know, but you do have some folks, you know, they're starting to come out like Fetterman, which, by the way, I'm sporting his T-shirt today. I want to thank Leslie, his campaign manager, for sending this out. Um, but, you know, a different kind of breed of Democrat seems to be waiting in the wings if these folks don't get their act together. Exactly. And I feel like these people should be held at the stake. If you're, I'm sorry, if you're a Democrat, if you're in, especially if you're in leadership, mm -hmm. there's no room for you to be pro-life or not pro-life. There's no room for you to to support something this restrictive, even if it's to fundraise off of. No, and right, and this is, this is where I come in. Look, I mean, like have, this is something that a majority of the party is against, and you're supporting it. You should not be in leadership. Yeah, I would I would have to agree with you, and I and I even look at it like this: is like, look, anybody is welcome to their own, you know, their own kind of personal views on stuff. Like I draw the line when it comes to, you know, you have your personal view on something, but you know, you don't get to then determine right, um, kind of women's control over their own bodies just because you have an idea in your head. But um, we're coming up right to a break. So listen, uh, we're going to take a break. This is Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. I'm talking with Sean Kitchen. Uh, we'll be back right after the break to talk about our thin-skinned, little, poor, right-wing people who are as <laughs> fragile as a little piece of glass. All right, Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Raging Chicken Press's Out the Poop podcast. Uh, if you want to help support this podcast and everything we do at Raging Chicken Press, you can go to our website at ragingchickenpress.org, click on the support membership tab, and become a member as so little as $5 a month. So, Sean, um, you know, I, I, off in the distance of right wing nut job land, I kept on hearing cries this past couple of weeks of like, Mommy, Mommy, help me, help me. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on? Oh, man, Rick Scott. Rick Scott, Voldemort, <laughs> Skeletor. He's whatever, he, looks like, man, just... he looks like he's from. Uh, he looks like he could be the Terminator from. He has got to be. I have to say, he's got to be one of the most frightening, or, or I should put it this way: clearly, he is part Evil of the alien invasion of the Earth. That man is nothing but uh, like a, 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 a flesh jacket for an alien. I'm telling you, that guy. So I'm, I'm sure we all seen the video a couple weeks ago. This lady sitting down in the Starbucks. And she just starts tearing into Rick Scott for his uh, for his recent votes for his recent signing abortion signing abortion legislation. There we go, you know, going after public health care and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And this lady mm -hmm. just called him an asshole and just started pointing and yelling and shouting and screaming until he basically ran out of that Starbucks. We all yeah. seen that video, right? Yeah, one of my favorite people. That woman, I tell you, it was great. It's, that's exactly how we should be treating these type of people in public. You know what I mean? You know, this is exactly your public official. This is how the criticism. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen, right? Or stay out of politics in general. And there was no pun intended there. But <clears throat> now the response to that was just amazing. Like I could not believe he 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 like took the bait and he just ran with it. Well, well, I mean, well, tell like, us a little, wait, 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 before you get into it, t tell us a little bit about the response. I mean, that what was his response to this? I mean, because I think the response was incredible what this guy did. Yeah. So he's he his super PAC or his political action committee spent money and ran a minute 30 second ad attacking this lady on YouTube. Like put this ad up on YouTube and just start putting it out on social media, attacking this lady for being an anarchist who didn't put her hand on her heart for pledging allegiance to the flag. I get to think of so many worse things people out there are doing, and then call her a latte drinking liberal who sits in Starbucks all day because she's unemployed. I mean, I, I thought this was incredible. And I looked at this, I, and I looked at this ad, and I was just like, "Wow, there's one thing. Okay, you don't feed the trolls, right? On the internet, you, you just don't feed the trolls. You, you don't do it." But he like he took that to like 
I mean, the lady, maybe you don't, you don't consider the lady a troll, obviously, but he like shot back at this lady. He punched down all the way down to the ground. I mean, he could, all he had to do is just shut, shut up, lick his wounds and just keep on going. But no, the following week he made this video attacking this lady because his ego got hurt. And it just it amazes me how thin skinned these these people are. No, I mean that's really incredible. And not only are they thin skinned, right? They 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 you know they pretend to be like you know self made man and the strong you know hard strong administrator guy and and all this kind of stuff. But it turns out that you know you prick their ego just a little bit and then they start you know kind of cry to mommy. They but then, no, it's worse. But wait, wait, what's worse about it though is that it's not just that they're thin skinned. Is then that they're 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 willing to use the full apparatus of all their money and campaigns have to just try to crush the other person to gore their to gore their opponents in public exactly and like I don't know if the response was worse for on the, I think the response completely backfired on his end because he mm -hmm. just you don't do those things and then you know in Pennsylvania we just had something I think what yesterday that came out you mean we've got our own Rick Scott right here in Pennsylvania. Well, well, we have our own um, twenty-some-year-old legislature who is from Northeast Philadelphia, and she's been introducing these extremely. She makes Lou Barletta look like a saint, pretty much. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Lou Barletta was the mayor of Hazleton, now you, now U.S. congressman who had the um, Alien Relief Act of two thousand six, and he tried to ban all aliens, all all, all undocumented immigrants out of um, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, pretty much. Um, Martina White from Northeast Philadelphia is trying to do the same thing. Not, 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 not there yet, but a bunch of activists confronted her yesterday inside her district office, and she just lost her shit. Started yelling and screaming and pointing and hollering, yelling at people, demanding them to get out of their office as they demanded a petition for her to remove her legislation from the books. That's pretty incredible. That's pretty good. But good old Martina White. Now, she, she's also someone who's kind of being looked at as one of these kind of young, kind of up and coming folks in the GOP in the state, isn't she? Um, not really. I have I have my own theories as to why she's in office. She's pretty much holding a seat for Brendan Boyle, um, Brendan Boyle's chief of staff. Mm -hmm. There was a big fight between Boyle and Stack in Northeast Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Boyle did not get the candidate. He wanted to run the Democratic primary. So word has it, which these are the people I trust and I know closely that he ran Martina White to uh, to get the so the Democrats would lose that seat. So in two years, his chief of staff, the one he wanted to run for that office, will be able to run in a primary. And now that's what's happening now. Wait, 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 wait. Let me let me see if I get this right. So you, you're wait, you're saying that the Democrat Brendan Boyle, Congressman Brendan, Co Boyle. So, yeah, Democrat though, right? Yeah. So he so, wanted he actually that he was actually supporting Martina White. He um, ran Martina White because Stack, Lieutenant Governor Stack, had Martina Del Ricci running for that seat and not the candidate Brendan Boyle won it. Gotcha. Man, so, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. This is blood <laughs> politics in Northeast Philly. And Martina White has a thing of interest, standing up for, for police. Mm -hmm. She's also the one who authored this um, bill that would make it illegal for public officials to release the names of police officers involved in officer related shootings or involved in extreme uses of force, which could be anything. Well, you know, this is this is what I wonder, though. You know, this is what I, you know, look at someone like her, um, you know, that if she was there to be kind of like a placeholder or something like that, I don't, you know, she doesn't seem to be working out quite in that way or kind of working out according to plan because, you know, she's she's been pretty active for being a first-term, you know, representative. Yeah. She is, and she's been introducing bills that have been written by the Fraternal Order of Police from Philadelphia. Right, exactly, which is not exactly, you know, uh, and her constituency a, a powerful is, group. And her constituency, or her district, has some of the, a lot of retired police officers. She basically lives in the Donald Trump neighborhood of Philadelphia. I was just about to ask you, so this is in that same, in that same area that has the high concentration of uh, Donald Trump voters. Exactly. So do you think that actually that that's what she's playing to here? I mean, she is she up for election in 2016? Yes, she is. So is she think she's she'll probably playing? she'll she'll run she'll run she'll win the primary, uh -huh. right? Because no, she's running on the post in the primary, but then she'll have a contested race against the Democrat. And who's the Democrat for that? Franz Nelm. OK. And is this Boyle's Boyle's guy? Yes. And what makes things worse is Nelm's 
was a lobbyist for the Ridge Policy Group mm-hmm. under under former Republican Governor Tom Ridge. So we might be replacing a Republican with a Republican who's registered as a Democrat. Oh my God, this is the kind of stuff that drives me crazy about this state. I'll tell you, um, you know, <laughs> it really, really does. I mean, you know, this is, um, but you know, it goes to your point that you were making in the first segment that, you know, you've got a Democratic Party in the state of. Pennsylvania that really doesn't have a game plan, a strong game plan statewide. You've got these pockets of organizations and kind of, you know, quasi democratic machines. Game of Thrones type of people going after Game of Thrones politics in different cities. You know, your party leaders going after each other, your ward leaders going after each other. You have, you know, stack the stack party and then the Boyle party fighting each other for like their own like little pieces of land in Northeast Philadelphia. And the same thing's happening. It's, it's they're doing it to spite each other, not to grow the party and grow an opposition to the stuff that's happening with the. No, right. this, is, this is kind of old time machine politics, right? I mean, this is kind of one this machine. Is Tammany machine Hall, together. right? And I look at it, you know, I look at it like this: is like, you know, I, you know, I, I the one where I'm thinking about this as we're talking about is this is something that we're just going to have to, I think, stay on in this podcast. Is got to keep on coming back to kind of uh, letting people know the kind of behind the scenes stuff on this, because frankly, a lot of this back and forth machine politics stuff that's going on, people don't know. I mean, every the everyday person in Pennsylvania, they don't kind of understand that these, this is what's getting us our leaders at this particular point. And, you know, I think it's about time we shine a little bit of light on that. Well, listen, we're coming right up to a break. This is Raging Chicken Press, Raging Chicken Radio's Out the Coop podcast. Uh, we're going to come right back after the break with a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of touching base on what happened this past weekend and uh, a little bit of fun stuff before we sign out. All right, this is Raging Chicken Radio's Out the Coop podcast. We're right back in a minute. Welcome back to Raging Chicken Radio's Out the Coop podcast. This is Kevin Mahoney. I'm the editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. And uh, boy, it's been a raucous day today. I'm telling you, we've been all over the all over the map, all the legislative map, getting kind of behind the scenes of what's going on and motivating our politics here. So uh, we'll talk about a little something to kind of light to kind of uh, take us out. You know, this just yesterday it was uh, I had a first opportunity. Uh, I was out in Kutztown. Uh, it was the first opportunity to stop by the Saucony Creek's new gastro pub. I mean, they've been brewing in Kutztown for a while now, um, but their uh, brew pub, or I'm sorry, their gastro pub has opened up and they use all local ingredient stuff, all handmade stuff. Um, and I got to tell you, the the food there was freaking awesome. I had the kind of pierogies and the French fries to make their own ketchup, make their own hot sauces. Um, it was just absolutely fantastic. And one of the reasons I really wanted to go yesterday is I wanted to sample. They've uh, they just recently won a, an award, a gold medal award winner for uh, a Belgian style fruit beer. Uh, it was the ginger uh, peach and ginger saison, and it was it was great. And had one of their other Belgians and things. So it's uh, check it out if you're in Kutztown. Check out Saucony Creek. It's uh, right on the kind of Kutztown Road as you're heading out from the university towards Reading. Uh, the left hand side is an old car dealership. So check us out. But um, so Sean, I you know this was a big weekend for you. I mean I, I don't want to kind of you know, try to suggest that my visit to a gastropub could possibly tap your kind of blowout down there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what you did? Well, um, before we get into that, I just want to ask you a quick question. How would you like that uh, sunny side up stat you got over oh the weekend? Oh, my God. That was so <laughs> good. Yeah, Sean dropped me off a, a sunny side up stat. What had, what? God, you know the ingredients better than I do. It peppers in it, cinnamon in it. What else was in it? Uh, Wahilo peppers, mm-hmm. cinnamon sticks, uh, cocoa nibs, and I believe vanilla beans added onto the Sunny Side Up stat, which uses Little Amps coffee mm-hmm. at, based out of Harrisburg. And I dropped you off some sours, too, that are prime beers. Yeah, that, I, I'm telling you, that, that Sunny Side Up was, uh, you know, that was right in my wheelhouse. I mean, we got the peppers in it, the cinnamon. You had the extra little, you know, that nice spicy flavor um, on top of just amazing, uh, you know, coffee. <laughs> I just, I, I was just like, all <laughs> praise goes to goes to the folks out there at Pizza Boy Brewery. So that was um, that was great. And I haven't had the sour yet. I'm kind of letting that sit that one for a little bit, waiting for just the right time. So maybe but once. When, this, hmm? well, I was gonna say yeah. So after I got done bootlegging your bootlegging the beer down to you, I was able to uh, go down to Forest and Maine for their fourth anniversary party. You know, it's great. It's a place I went to on a weekly basis. You'll hear me talk about this a lot. We had our own trivia team set up down there, and it's great to see uh, every Thursday night. So I got to meet up with the old gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to enjoy some day drinking. I lost count about, like, I think I had, like, seven or eight IPAs by, like, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. 
<laughs> at the blowout. Well, it's a good thing. A good thing once again. We should remind our we should remind our listeners that uh, Sean is responsible. He had mommy and daddy come pick him up, so uh, he wasn't <laughs> exactly. driving at that. I live within ten minutes. I wasn't going to use Uber or Lyft or some other uh, anti democratic, anti labor uh, organization to 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 uh, engage in my drinking. Fair enough. Fair enough. So <laughs> wait, while you were at Forest in Maine, uh, how did your laundry come out? I understand you had your parents do your laundry too, which is freaking unbelievable to me still. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so anyways, how was the celebration? Was it pretty cool? Oh, it was awesome. They had live music there. Um, for those who haven't been there yet, so Forest in Maine Brewing is on the cross streets of Forest in Maine and Ambler. Um, it's in this old victorian house it's from like the 1890s 1880s and um so it's a very small tight place you can't really fit that many people in there so when i got there there were about 200 people outside wow. of the place uh, outside the front lawn and then uh, going onto the sidewalk and into the street and um we had a fun time uh we were blocking actually blocking a lane of the street which i'm no cops went by we were drinking in the sidewalk drinking in the streets throwing footballs back and forth <laughs> people were bringing their own bottles of beer with them and we we're passing around all other different types of beers so we we're trying like all this cool stuff and um there's some other fun party favors being passed around as well but i can't get into that <laughs> sure enough. Well, I'll tell you what. Is as as part of the uh, as part of the Opticoop podcast. Uh, I know Sean, you posted a couple of videos up um, about some of that stuff there. Maybe we'll tag on a couple of the videos to the podcast stuff. People want to do check us out. Uh, exactly. Check it out. It's on my Instagram page. Um, mm -hmm. I got a couple of them. I was just posting a bunch of Instagram photos the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of great music. The thing I love the most there is that the uh, the the last band to play was the bartender, and was the one bartender Mike. And then the, uh, the the other two brewers were there playing on stage as well, playing bass and the drums. So it's like these people are also they it's they have a really great presence within the local community. Well, and and the residents there were from Ambler. Everyone was within walking distance. Right. You met up with people you meet within the beer scene. You know, I worked in a beer distributor for two years, so you got to meet up with your friends who are sales reps for Wirebacher and other places, or for people who were. Uh, you know, working for heavy seas, working now, working for other like wholesalers and distributors. No, so that's great. And and you said, I mean, you've, you've said ever since uh, ever since you started going there, you said they've done such a great job in kind of cultivating uh, a community down there. So anybody who's out down in the Ambler area, please do check out Forest in Maine. Um, uh, Sean just raves about it. Says some of the best, uh, you know, some of the best beer, local beer that's brewed there, and plus it's just a great community all around. So listen, we're running right up to it. So uh, we're gonna have to kind of. Uh, Say goodbye. This is Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. We're here every week on Tuesdays. Uh, look for us. Sign up on iTunes or Stitcher um, and keep us going. And just a word to everyone out there. When you go home to visit your parents, do your own damn laundry. All right. <laughs> this is Kevin Mahoney. Uh, we're out of here. Till next week. All right. <laughs> Dude, you're in there. I couldn't resist, man. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> One of the beers that someone gave us there uh -huh. was an Avery coconut chocolate stout. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where's that from? Where was that? Was that from there? Avery. No, Avery. Oh, Avery. Oh, Avery was the. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Where's, well, where's Avery? Where's that? Uh, Boulder, Colorado, which is where I'll be going for for a vacation. Yeah, so vacation, yeah. vacation from freaking reality. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should have like a podcast of me like in Boulder. I'll just be on my microphone. Like oh, we, my, we could do that. We could do my headset could do <laughs> talking about talking about how high the atmosphere is. Up there. Uh, are you gonna are you gonna have your uh, your computer with you? I'm not gonna have my computer with me, but I could do probably do it through my smartphone. Do you think well, on a Hangout? You think you could do it on a Hangout through your smartphone? Um, yeah, I have Google. I, I've done that stuff before. You've done it before. I, I've just never done it on a phone before. So I just basically, basically like a video call, right? Uh -huh. I would have to hold my phone and point it to me, so you could see, like, so we can go have a back and forth. Well, you you wouldn't even need a video, right? I mean, just like now, you don't have a video up. No, but I mean, like, but it takes a video anyway. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like on, like on the, like on the smartphone. I got you. Well, you got one of those kickstands for your phone, anyways, right? Yeah. So okay. it could be like me with like the mountains in the background. 
<laughs> mountains of what is the question <laughs> oh man that's great i think i might do a blog post on that <laughs> no i'm serious do that seriously do it but do it tag it tap room okay mm -hmm. Even if you want to do stuff like that, you know, look, just just tag it and tap room stuff. So let's start building that as so we had because like see what we're talking about, like how you know, in fact you keep on, you know, plugging for us in Maine. We're talking about this beer, just like the little kind of end segment stuff. That's the kind of thing that can help help build stuff over time. And I you know again, we're not getting a ton of listeners right now, but you know, again, it's about the more that we get used to doing that and kind of talking about some of the beers and stuff. And then when I start getting these next segments, um, segments up with folks, so I think I'm gonna do like one, I'll do one on. Uh, so you I'll, know, what I think we should do what? also start rating the podcast on iTunes. Having like asking friends to rate the podcast on iTunes. Well, that's what I. That's I didn't say this. I didn't say the rate it today. I should. I got to add that into the thing. But that's what I said last week. I'm telling you, that's what. It, like you've got bigger social networks than I do, right? So. I mean, definitely just push that out and tell people to go in and like and rate the stuff. I and mean, this is what they do in Majority Report every freaking week, right? Yeah. And so, so you know, get the, go there and kind of rate us and leave us a com leave a comment and rate us on iTunes. Rate us on iTunes. Even if you don't listen to it, right? Even if you don't listen to it every week, you just check in once in a while. Do it. It'll help us get us up there. It would get us up there in the ratings. And that's that's really what we need. Yeah, people are like people are talking about. Like, oh, yeah, this uh, this one. No, and I think the way that this is going to get broken out too. I think the way this would be good because you know I, the way I look at this is like like this is this this podcast that we're doing right now is really the, is the core of uh, of the project, right? But then start adding these segments on. So if I have say for example, so Colleen and I have been back and forth a little bit about doing some stuff. So. Um, so I think like once we get established and then we start bringing people on, like doing a guest thing, because I was thinking like Pennsylvania Budget Policy Center is starting to do mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the guys who does the podcast, I don't think he does, I don't know if he does the podcast, but he does communications there is Jeff Garris. Mm -hmm. He's the one who is like standing out screaming at Jeff, at Senator Toomey to do his job. Oh, that's where I know him from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's probably the best spokesperson, like not <laughs> spokesperson, the best communicator within and he's like listen you have to bring the class war if there's 10 people if there's five people standing in front of you or if there's like a hundred people standing in front of you all right so i got a question for you then so so this guy so do you know him oh yeah oh yeah we we, we meet up for coffee we quote unquote coffee in quotation marks some days uh, okay gotcha <laughs> <laughs> quote unquote king coffee. henry the eighth king yeah. henry the eighth <laughs> gotcha. So listen, yeah. no, if you next time you talk to him, ask him if if he'd be interested in doing just like uh, kind of like just like once a month, right? Just doing a um a little segment on what's happening at the over at the, uh, the budget and policy center. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> ask him because like because what cause here here's this is how I'm thinking about it, right? So so for example, so like he he could be on one week. The first week of the month, someone could be on the second week of the month. Exactly. Could be on the third week of the month. But I'm gonna I'm gonna brand each one of those segments separately. Mm -hmm. Okay. So think about it like this, right? So each one of the things that we're doing is gonna be separate. But if you're gonna go to if you're gonna go right now, if you go to iTunes, right, and you do Raging Chicken Radio, right, you're gonna you can get the entire you'll get the entire podcast, right? So you'll get our segment. Plus somebody, you know, plus that a separate separate segment and anything else that that we kind of you know come out with. Um, but w once we once that kind of sits become a routine, I'm going to also have those kind of separate out. So on on WordPress, you can actually this, each one of those things going to have a separate feed, right? So if somebody wants to do just the budget and policy center one, boom, they could do that. If they want to do just the beer one, boom, they could do that. If they want to do just that, boom, they could do that. But all those things together are going to be you know form that whole podcast. So then. We'll have this is this segment here, right? I mean, I think by the time I, I told you about the about the about the app radio station, right? Yeah. Okay. So by the time when that when that starts rolling, right, and they're kind of like fully going, this segment will be able to plug that right into their um, right into their system, right? So we're actually gonna they're gonna pick us up, right? So mm -hmm. and now once it's once we pick it up through them, here's the nice thing about it: once it goes through them. Right, this podcast then becomes available to anybody on Pacifica Networks because it's going to be a Pacifica Network affiliated thing. Okay, so we have to keep it um, FCC friendly. No, no, it's a podcast. <clears throat> no, but if it's being picked up by Pacifica Radio Network, 
It has to be FCC friendly. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll have to bleep it out, you know? No. I think the, they, they won't have the people to do that. You have to talk to Rick about this. I'm pretty sure they, they, they clip, they click and drag. So they pretty much just get, get the file and they slip it right into the, uh, yeah. Okay. Talk to All right. I'll ask them. Sure. But I'm pretty <clears> sure like what they do is they just get the audio clip, they put in the automation system, they turn around and boom, gone. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll ask them about that then. Cause like then, then yeah. we'll have to, that'll, that'll, that, well, whatever. I mean, that, now we'll have to think about whether we want to do that or not. So, <clears throat> but I mean, like, I, I think we could keep it friendly, like FCC friendly like that. You know what I mean? But not just saying, the seven eight the seven words you can't say on TV. True enough. True enough. We could do that. I said shit on a show the other day. I felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> on your so like the way Rick says it on your that's allowed to happen on his end. No, it is. It is. It's fine. And I you I, he can't say that because he's the one hosting right. the show. No, 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 right, right. No, he said he said he said thanks for saying. I didn't even know I said it, and I actually had to go back and I was like, really? I what? And and I and even but you know even it, it sounds like I almost said you know ship with a p, right? Um, but I, I mean I just have no recollection of saying it. I was saying you know but, you know you know I was I, I don't know I don't I felt really bad though because I've never I mean I've been so conscious about not doing that because you know once I start getting pissed off and my mouth starts going, but but whatever yeah he was like thanks for saying shit on my show I'm like what <laughs> he's like ah we'll take care of it no big deal but. <clears throat> Anyways, all right. I'm going to try to clip this out and get going. So, but I think that. <clears throat> so I think that's kind of the that's the, the plan going forward. Is like so if you've got somebody, you know, I've always wanted to have some like somebody write for Raging Chicken, who their their the sole job would be to pay attention to what's coming out of the Pennsylvania Budget and Policy Center, paying attention to what's coming out of the Key Research Research Center, and report just on that stuff. Right. That would be their beat. Right. And uh, but you know if this is a way to kind of begin to do some of that stuff that'd be that'd be awesome, you know to have just even come out what's going on here and you know and you know he can have free reign in terms of what's going on if if, if his people are cool with it and he wants to do it I'd love to do it. I oh, know I think they would be cool with it because Mark Steer, mm -hmm. like like you have John Newar, Mark Steer, and stuff like that mm -hmm. there. I don't think like they would be opposed to that at all. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, well, especially it gives them a little bit, you know, the idea is that, you know, they would come on and talk about it. It would be it would be our podcast, but he's kind of, you know, he's kind of coming on as a guest, right? As kind of a regular segment. And, you know, I look at it as an opportunity to kind of promote what they're doing, you know, promote kind of the stuff that's coming out there and provide yet another venue they can clip this stuff out. So, And we also get different guests. We don't get the same guests that Rick's getting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, I don't think we get Mark Price on here all the time. I think no, no, I don't. I, 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 I agree, and I think that's uh, that you want to. I, uh, I've got this other thing in the back of my head that I've just, I've got to sit down. I, I just need a couple hours just to kind of like flesh it out a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna, what, okay, so you also got this. I'm gonna do this thing called like basically like the sit down, right? And the idea with the sit down is that you're gonna basically take some kind of expert or something like that. Did you just fucking pop open a beer? No. <laughs> <laughs> It was my coffee cup. Oh my god! I was like, it's fucking cold after eleven. <laughs> but um, I thought you like popped the cork. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, really? Um, but no, I was, I was, uh, um, was, you basically take kind of like an expert who does this stuff, and whether they come out with a book or an article, thing like this. But then instead of trying to do this big thing, right, with articles all over, to, to see if ABSCUF would be interested in, you know, kind of helping identify some experts in these fields in these particular areas. So kind of drawing from PA-based kind of, say, academics and scholars and that kind of stuff um, who are writing on this kind of thing. So I think that might be kind of another cool way to do it too as well. So, you know, that, and I think that would be, you know, a really... If each one of those things is like a half an hour, so then together th this this segment plus the other one will be like an hour. Um, you got once a week, you got some kind of you know that's a pretty substantial thing, and every week it's a little bit different, right? You got our thing, kind of report on it, and then you got one thing on whatever you know X, Y, or Z or something like that. Yeah, and then um, so here here's something. So like on Saturday, I posted mm -hmm. pictures of the tulips coming out in my backyard. Yeah, my little patch of grass. Yeah. So guess what happened yesterday? I came back to my apartment yesterday they morning. They were gone. Some fucking rodent ate them. 
I came back, like, I was like, oh, you know, it's nice to get your own flowers coming up and all. Like, I mean, they were there before I moved there, obviously. Uh-huh. But the tulips were coming up. I was like, oh, it's nice. You know, my tulips are coming up. Because <laughs> they were still, like, the bulb was still closed. 